Hey, welcome back. Just a quick look at a game I've been messing around with. It's called Alert Force um, from Close Simulations, 1983, I believe. It's a small little um, micro game. We have some wonderful uh, cover art on the front and the back. Um, let's see, what's it say here on the box? The time is 3.48 a.m. All is quiet at Peace Air Force Base, home of the 905th Bomb Wing, Strategic Air Command. Sentries walk their posts as huge spotlights illuminate the bombers, laden with their nuclear payloads. Suddenly, the rattle of small arms fire rips through the night, and a bomber bursts into flames. Sentries scramble, cocking and charging their bolts on the M16s. The alert force has been attacked. Alert Force is a man-to-man -man tactical game of terrorist warfare. Rules include the use of fragmentation and gas grenades, light and tank weapons, satchel charges, vehicular movement and ramming, the effects of exploding aircraft, bunkers, and even the theft of nuclear weapons. A system of variable forces always keeps the other player guessing. Playing time is 20 minutes and up. The physical components is a hundred and twelve thick die cut counters, a large 12 by 14 inch map, a 16 page illustrated rule book, and a Ziploc bag for unit storage. Once again this is produced by Close Simulations. I believe that's Wayne Close is the was the designer and owner of it. P.O. Box 2247, Northbrook, Illinois, 662 is your zip code. And once again, copyright is 1983. Um, there's quite a bit to this little game, although the rule book suffers from poor editing and poor um, organization and stuff. It's not that hard to learn the game, but it is... Uh, uh, not laid out the best it can be. You just have this little, small little booklet. You have your uh, explosives and firearm strength and your scatter table and your hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, tables on the back. Uh, inside the back cover we have our terrain effects chart with all the pertinent information that terrain, uh, how it affects the game. Let's see, we have <clears throat> table of contents. Well, let's just see here. Introduction, we have the game scale, game equipment, sequence of play, movement, combat, activation, victory conditions, credits, and the terrain effects chart and combat tables. Uh, let's see, we have the sequence of play, which is the terrorist movement phase, followed by terrorist combat, which is subdivided into explosive weapon attacks, fire attacks, hand-to-hand -hand attacks, and then we try to activate applicable um, uh, security police that have been, uh, see if they become aware of these attacks. Then we have security police move. We roll to activate inactive security police. These are units that, um, <clears throat> let me think, that have not witnessed attacks directly but they, um, well, let me double check here, instead of just going off babbling like an idiot. Activation of all inactive security police, if there are any active security police on the map, um, on the turn after any of the bunkers becomes active, all alert crews are activated. Um, Blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, it has something to do with activating units. I, I had no, don't think I've been even messing with it. I just pretty much, if the unit has an LOS to the um, to a terrorist unit, it pretty much is activated. There are rules for, we're playing at night right now, so <clears throat> if you don't see a terrorist unit attack, or if it's not within the illuminated area, which is denoted by these uh, this dotted line here, uh, where all the spotlights and stuff are, if they're not within that, you really can't see them unless, say, a fire or do something like that. We have the perimeter fence here, this dark line around here. Uh, we have some, what, buildings like these. Uh, there's a guard tower. You can place it anywhere um, that's not on the um, ramp. 
<clears throat> I've chose to place it here so it has a pretty good field of uh, fire all around it. Um, there's a bunker here, a bunker here, and a bunker here. They're pretty much almost impregnable to any kind of attack, um, except for your satchel charges and your light anti-tank weapons. But, let's go back to the sequence of play. We have the security police uh, combat. Uh, let's see, yeah, we moved them. Then we have the combat, which consists of explosive weapon attacks, fire attacks, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. There are rules for the movement of uh, men and machines, vehicular movement, uh, who can use what vehicles, zones of control, everybody has a zone of control, costs an extra uh, movement point to enter that zone of control, the six hexes adjacent to a unit, stacking, only six in a vehicle, or tower, otherwise there is no limit. Uh, let's see, we have <clears throat> movement. Men moving on foot up to half of their print, printed movement allowance may still fire their weapons or throw a grenade, light in a armor weapon or a satchel charge. At their current attack factor, if you move, move three movement points <clears throat> on foot, you only get half your uh, attack factor. And if you move your full printed uh, movement allowance, which is four for all foot units, <clears throat> you can't attack at all. You can ram. Uh, you can ram with the cars and the armored cars. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's just go with an alert crew vehicle here. Let's see if we can get that into any kind of focus. And let's see. Well, trust me, this is a pickup car type thing. Uh, I'm not going to get too focused. Um, it has a defense of 2 and a movement of 12. Let's see if I can get it back close to where it was. That's yeah, close enough. And the armored cars here, they have a defense of 3. Same movement allowance. Anyway, you can ram the vehicles. You can ram people. You can ram the aircraft. You can ram the fence. Um, combat is pretty much a odds-based... Uh, odds-based uh, combat results table. <clears throat> it uses the firearm uh, attack table, which is basically you... Um, well, if you have an armored... Well, armored. Let's see here. What's going to work best here? Probably nothing. Let me zoom in a little bit more and see if this helps any. Probably not. Probably just makes it even more blurry. Just a minute here. Let's see what we can do here, if anything. Anyway, um, we have automatic rifles, we have machine pistols, and machine guns. I know it's not very clear to see, but and they have different strengths at different ranges. So you'll uh, figure out your range to the target based upon the type of unit. Like this unit here. Is one of the terrorist units. Wish I could get a little bit better zoom in here, a little more clarity. Anyway, it has an AR at the top, which is an automatic rifle. It has a defense of one, which is on the left, and it has a movement uh, point value at the bottom right, which is four. Anyway, you'll take the AR um, on the firearm strength table, which is this column. You'll determine how far away it is, and this will determine the uh, strength of the attack. Uh, firearm attacks um, or attacks can be combined so you can have two or three four units fire at one unit anyway let's just say it's a three hex range to an enemy we find an enemy unit here for the for fun that is a security police unit so it's a it's an automatic rifle we'll say it's firing at three hexes at that target at three hexes the AR is a two like I say it's there's the range. Oh, actually, it's a one. Sorry. So, say the terrorist is attacking the American at three, so it's a strength of one. The defense strength of the uh, security police unit there is a one, so it's going to be a one-to-one -one attack. And you would just come up here. Let's see what I can do here, if anything. This camera is really excellent at close range, or close, but... You start zooming and you, um, well, it sucks. I could put it up uh, closer, but we don't want to do that at the moment. Anyway, the one-to-one one -one attack ratio, is, or 
column is here. You roll two six-sided dice. I come up with a nine. Nine is over here at one to one. It's going to be a z uh, no effect. So that's pretty much how combat is resolved. Uh, and then there's a hand-to-hand -hand combat. I've not uh, actually uh, used it yet, so I don't really know how hand-to-hand -hand combat works. But it's also uh, an odds-based uh, table, so I'm sure it's similar. Uh, we have a scatter table, so if you start throwing uh, grenades or grenade launcher, launch grenades, uh, a satchel charge or a law rocket, you know, we have scatter and all that. Anyway, you can crater hexes. Um, what else can you do? Combat, combat, explosive weapon attacks. <clears throat> they have to be made separately. Uh, like I say, you basically resolve it at the same kind of a odds factors. You can crater things in the taxi line, road hex, the ramp. <clears throat> um, then it tells you more about fire combat, collateral damage, anything in or around where an uh, explosive weapon uh, is used. Uh, there can be collateral damage, line of sight. You can exchange weapons with other counters. Over here, for example, we had an attack on this uh, terrorist unit. Uh, the man was killed, but he dropped his light anti-armor weapon. And I'm moving a machine gun up to um, hopefully um, take that weapon and turn it on the terrorist. And these terrorists are not like, you know, the terrorists we have today, <clears throat> they are more like homegrown domestic terrorists, um, as it would have been back in the 80s. So, um, however you feel about that, um, that's about what the, uh, that's kind of what we're simulating here. That was weapon exchange, so you could just take somebody else's weapon. Hand-to-hand -hand combat's next, and then we have wreck explosions. If as a result of some form of combat, an aircraft or vehicle is destroyed, there's a chance it will explode. Then we have combat restrictions. <clears throat> Security police may not, may not fire or shoot explosive weapons at a terrorist who has not engaged in some form of combat. Uh, unless the terrorist is currently attacked or stacked with a terrorist who has engaged in combat. Um, it's kind of hard to uh, engage the terrorists. I guess that's as it should be. Um, there's a lot of special rules on how and where and when you can uh, attack the terrorist uh, players' units. And I think that's pretty good because from what I've been playing, um, the terrorists are pretty much getting wiped out by the um, security police. Uh, we have night combat, which is what we're doing now. Unless units are in the illuminated area, which was that is that dotted line, dotted black line. Uh, let's see, can we see that on here? Yeah, a little bit. If they're within that line there in the illumination area. Um, we have CS gas attacks. For some reason, only the terrorist player has those. Um, and everybody's considered to have fragmentation grenades. Well, at least the terrorists are. Then we have attacking bunkers and armored cars. And then we have the activation uh, process, which is pretty much the nearest uh, security police or stack of security police will become active if a terrorist is attacking an alert crew, which are basically the pilots. Um, they don't have any weapons; they're unarmed, uh, but they can take uh, they can exchange weapons with a. Um, uh, let's see, click my thought here. Who has a explosive weapon or whatever? Uh, adjacent to the fence, if they're adjacent to the fence that surrounds the ramp area, if they shoot a firearm, if they're adjacent to a security police or in the same hex as a security police or move through these positions during the terrorist movement phase, if they're in any ramp or taxi line hex that is visible to the security police, and if they're shooting at the security police and they wound them, wound one of them. The nearest alert crew becomes activated if a terrorist is shooting a firearm at the alert crew or is he is in the same hex, and so on and so forth. At night time, to, to activate an SP um, beyond the 
kind of the automatic one up there. Uh, you need to roll a one or two. And then you set up play, you get so many points. Um, I don't know if we can move over here to my little photocopied uh, cheat sheets and stuff. But you get so many points to uh, buy your forces. There are certain restrictions on how you deploy them. And there is a nuclear theft option, but I'm not messing with it. And then we have victory conditions. And the game credits. And the trick describes the train effects chart, and that's pretty much it. All that in uh, a handy dandy little 16 page booklet. Um, I've been playing, and this is about the 34 turn. It doesn't really have turns per se, or a number of terms. Terms? Terms. Uh, it's pretty much you just play until one side or the other gets wiped out. So, you know, it could take a while. Um, but other than that, uh, that's pretty much all there is. There's a scatter, scatter scatter diagram at the top for, you know, when your weapons and stuff scatter. Let's see here. Different types of terrain. The blue-green over here is grass, and then the one with the wooded pattern, of course, is woods. Uh, the high buildings are the white squares. <clears throat> the tower, of course, is there. The bunker is right here. There's three of them, like I said, and it's almost impossible to... You can't even uh, hit anybody inside of a bunker, pretty much. Even with an explosive weapon, it uh, takes a lot. This uh kind of fun. What did I do with my... Um... Oh, blast it. Well, what I did was, oh yeah, I moved the I moved the terrorist uh, <clears throat> armored car up to here, but you could ram the fence, so I rammed the fence right here. First time I just damaged it. Two damages equal a kill or a destroyed, so I had to back up, ram it again in the next turn, and we finally um, rolled it, uh, rolled another result, which damaged it again, which wrecked it, or you know, put a hole through it, so. So my guys charged on in there. We're going to toss a satchel charge at this bunker here and see what happens, if anything. And just, like I said, just kind of messing around with it. Uh, probably put it up tonight and move on to something a little bit more exciting. It's not a bad little game, but um, I would like to see uh, I'd like to see a few different things in it. Um, I think it would be better if it had just, you know, single man counter so to speak and you stack a weapon with them uh, uh, several other things I think would make it just a little bit more fun and stuff but it's not too bad um, like I said it's a early 80's type game Wayne Close also put out a couple other games I don't know I have one of them which is the Falklands War game and I don't know Oh, the Grenada, uh, Granada, Grenada game. I have that one. So, anyway, with that, I think I'll just uh, call it a video. And I will chat with you later.